people in my seminars and workshop to raise their hands if they know someone close to them who struggles with depression or an anxiety disorder, between 70 and 90% of the people there raise their hands. Now I've run workshops in hundreds of places around Australia and around the world, and the answer is always the same. And this cost of stress and depression in the workplace is enormous, with Medibank Private estimating that it accounts for 34% of lost productivity through absenteeism and presenteeism. Now you can readily see absenteeism because people are away. But presenteeism is a bit harder. Presenteeism is when people are physically at work but not fully productive. The lights are on, but no one's at home. It might surprise you to know that presenteeism is actually estimated to be between three to six times the cost of absenteeism. What this shows is that people struggling with stress and depression in the workplace is surprisingly common. And yet, in research I did in my third book, Back from the Brink, 86% of these people that are struggling said they would rather suffer in silence than discuss it with their work colleagues. I'd like to just take a moment now to have a discussion with your colleagues about two things. The first thing is, is there anyone in your life who has struggled emotionally, either in the past or the present? And then secondly, why do you think people would rather suffer in silence than discuss their depression or anxiety with their workmates? I'm sure you found that many in your team had someone in their life that was struggling. My research shows that most people who live with a mood disorder would rather suffer in silence because they feel they'd be uh, unfairly judged or have their career jeopardized by disclosing it. And I'm sure those results wouldn't surprise you. So what can we do about this? In my third book, Back from the Brink, I asked over 4,000 people who live with depression or bipolar, what helped you most in your recovery? I gave people over 60 options that included lifestyle strategies, psychological treatments and medications. I wasn't seeking for one magic answer, but I was seeking themes that would make a difference. From this research, I've developed an approach I call five ways to help a stressed workmate. We can all play an incredibly important role in helping those who may be struggling. We can be the rainbow in someone's storm. I also know that there will be people watching this video who are personally struggling. The suggestions you hear can also help you. I know this because I have emails and letters from hundreds of people saying that these five steps made a big difference to their recovery. Now you notice that the five steps form the acronym I CARE, and this is to help make it easy to remember. I'm really passionate about sharing the I CARE approach because I know from first-hand experience that full recovery is highly probable if you take appropriate actions. My challenge to you is to not only remember these five steps, but also to act on them with the people in your life who may be struggling. I is for identity. As highlighted previously, there is still tremendous stigma in the workplace, and it is unlikely that those who are struggling will admit it. So what do we look for? We look for people acting differently. They may be quieter than normal, moodier than normal, suddenly arriving unkempt at work or with alcohol in their breath. They may be slow with completing their work. They may also be isolating and avoiding people. Suddenly they may not be attending Friday night drinks. Now, of course, we all have bad days. But if people start demonstrating this atypical behaviour for three days or more, we should act. Vulnerable people could also be those going through tough times, like divorce or separation, death of a parent or a sick child. So once we identify these vulnerable people, what do we do that can help the most? 
Now just take a moment to discuss with your teammates what you think is the most important strategy that helps people with recovery. So what did you think was most important? Compassion and emotional support was judged to be the most important by far. So C is for compassion. Now, this support gives stress workmates the reassurance that people care. So how do we do this? We start by asking them, are you okay? And there is a four step process for doing this. Now, the first step is to break the ice, talk about the weather, talk about family, and then make an observation about a change in behavior. You know, your, your reports are later than usual. And then say, is everything okay? The next step is to listen without judgment. Don't go straight into problem solving. Keep asking questions because the more people feel understood, the greater our capacity to influence them. And that's the next step, to encourage action. You want them to take one step. It could be to see a GP, to call the EAP line, to call a helpline. That's step three. And then step four is to follow up. Now, I know from firsthand experience that, you know, when you're in the red zone or not feeling great, you feel you've tried everything. So that's why it's important to follow up to see they've actually taken action. Now, the most common action we'd like to encourage them to do is to see a mental health savvy GP, which leads us to step three. A is for access experts. The most important expert you can find is a mental health savvy GP. A mental health savvy GP will have the skills to assist and also to determine if the person may need a good psychologist or a psychiatrist. Depression and stress disorders are estimated to be the root cause of 26% of GP visits. And yet when a medical student studies to become a GP over six years, it's estimated they spend less than 1% of lecture time on these conditions. So how can you help them find a good GP? Well, one good suggestion is to ask around, ask for recommendations of friends and family. It's no guarantee, but it's better than going straight to the yellow pages. You can also go to the Beyond Blue website and input a postcode, and that tells you GPs and psychologists that have a special interest in mental health that live near you. So how does your teammate sense they have found a good GP after the first visit? Well, I suggest they ask themselves these things. Did the GP care about me as a person? Did they understand me? Did they seem to probe well about the symptoms? Did they outline a plan that I have confidence in? So helping them to find good expert help is essential. So what's next? R is for revitalizing work. Early in my career, I worked for 15 years in recruitment and career planning. So I knew intuitively that work is important for recovery and well-being generally. I worked as a volunteer in volunteering New South Wales to help me with my recovery. So I know firsthand how critical it can be. Even with this background, I was still astonished to learn how important fulfilling work was to recover. It rated number six out of 60 options, number six. So encourage them to stay at work if at all possible, even if this means cutting back on their workload or working part-time. If possible, keep, keep them connected and interacting with your team. Which now brings us to the final step. E is for exercise. Both moderate exercise, which is equivalent to 30 minute brisk walk six days per week, and vigorous exercise, 30 minutes jog, four days a week, were both in the top 10 out of 60 strategies. But here's the thing, when people are feeling depressed, 
They don't often feel like exercising. I know I didn't. But here's what I've found has really, really helped people. Get to find something they like which is easy. So it could be walking, it could be cycling, it could be swimming, it could be dancing, something they like. Start small. If they haven't been doing any exercise, suggest they work for 10 minutes each day for the first week and then gradually increase it by 10%. Ultimately, you want to get it up to a 30-minute brisk walk. Suggest they establish rituals that make it easy to start. Things like putting out your clothes or joggers the night before so that when you get up in the morning, you can just slip them on and get out the door. The easier you make getting out the door, the better. You could also offer to go on a walk with them at lunchtime. So let's just have a quick recap of the five ways to help a stress workmate. This is the eye care approach. I is for identify. Z is for compassion. A is for access experts. R is for revitalizing work. E is for exercise. To help you remember this, you may like to download the poster from the link indicated. I strongly encourage you to apply the eye care approach to someone who may be struggling. I've seen so many examples where this has been a breakthrough. May you individually and collectively go for the green zone every day.